Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third and final round at the 2020 PCS Open. And this is the back 10. Just 10 holes remain after a long weekend of very competitive disc golf. I'm joined by Eagle McMahon, your 2019 PCS Open champion. And Eagle, mid to late September right now, the Fjords and some great action along with Peter trying to hunt down the leaders in the front 10. Now we move on to hole 11. What's the game plan? Hole 11, just a straight to the right par three, 111 meters. Peter will be up on the box and starting this round, you know, we didn't really think of, you know, Peter was seven strokes back of Stale and 10 holes later, they're tied. He's one off the lead. This guy is hot right now. So hot, he's even had to shed a layer and he's in short sleeves. We'll see if he can keep this train rolling. What a competitive battle among the three of them right now. This looks to be a good line, but just a little bit low, but it's still, it's still a Peter Lunday look, I'd say. And, and worth noting, Peter, the only competitor of the three without a blemish on his scorecard. He started out with three straight birdies. He picked up a few more after that. He's got the last two holes and no blemishes whatsoever on that scorecard. Your current leader in Canute. Canute. That's going to be... Within the circle, I'd say, good shot from Canute. Uh, I believe it was round two. We saw Stale really struggle with this one. We'll see if he can make an adjustment. And he's done just that. Wow. Yeah, last round, this was kind of the stretch where Stale was really struggling. So... Uh, I mean, already he's doing a lot better. <laughs> As he's actually driven all the way to the basket, and Peter just off the front can't connect, but another good run. Absolutely. Did Andres just hit uh, an early tree? He, yeah, he. Uh, the tree seemed to be right in front of him, and uh, <laughs> Canute says, hey, if you're not going to capitalize, Peter, I am. And comes back out with another great putt. At this point of the round, you know, the, the nerves have kind of settled down. They're still there. But basically, you know, if Canute, if Canute wants to uh, be at the top spot at the end of the day, he's going to start making some good shots. And uh, it looks like, uh, you know, he's, he's rising to the occasion. But still, only, only uh, one stroke lead over Stale, two strokes out over Peter. It is far from over. Yeah, we have nine holes left to play in this 20 hole round. Here's hole 12. Hole 12, par five, 290 feet. It is basically, you can play this however you really want to. Uh, one issue that I have seen with uh, the guys is just. They're going a little bit too aggressive, thinking they need to bite off a little too much distance. And really, I believe this hole is all about, you know, throwing as far as you feel comfortable with and just making sure you do not find yourself out of bounds. Yeah, and this actually comes in as the third most difficult hole on the course relative to par. It's a par five, but it still has been playing at 6.3 when it was all said and done. So third most difficult hole on the course and OB everywhere. Canute looks like he threw a very clean streamlined shot right into a great landing zone, setting himself beautifully. And Stale with an early out of bounds graphic. I imagine he just pulled it out of bound just too quick. Okay, this is big for Peter. Last round, he took a pretty big number on this hole and kind of, you know, just 
you know, set a, a really bad tone for his round. So if he can get this first shot inbounds, looking down the fairway, this will be huge for him. Yeah, did he have two or three out of bounds during uh, round two? I believe so. It was it was it was at least a double bogey on this hole, potentially more. And he is in the middle of the fairway. What a great adjustment that he's made. And Andreas playing the the turnover, and that looks like it's going to have a great result as well. So just proving there's a couple different ways to attack this tee shot. Stale with the early out of bounds is going to be our first to throw. He's going to have to throw something with a good amount of Anheuser out of the hand. Stalling and finds himself in bounds, but not by much. Yeah, it must not be. We didn't see the OB graphic. I was actually waiting for it. And somehow it looks like he might have stayed in bounds there. Safe play right up the fairway by Andreas. Yeah, and from where he's at now, he'll he'll be faced with the decision to go over to potentially get the birdie, uh, but it will be from a, a long distance. Peter looks to be lining up a hyzer, mostly because I think there was a little tree in front of him, kind of prohibiting him from taking more of a, a direct line. And I know I was saying as we cleared out of the front 10 that, you know, some of these holes are a little bit softer out here. And that's why you'll see a higher likelihood of a disc coming in and tombstoning the way that we just saw Peters. That's a good looking shot by our leader in Canute. And is Stale squinting at the sun or is he just smiling like he always does? I think it's just, you know, there's always a smile on his face. So we <laughs> turn not. Uh, that one also tombstones and uh, stays right in position. You can see how short he is of the platform green. So Andreas looks to be going for the green and just coming up short. I think he'll be taking it on the the closer side of out of bounds, closer to us, that is. Peter with just a spike hyzer to the basket. Oh, not enough power. Kind of maybe misreading that a little bit, not giving it enough. I mean, he'll have an uphill putt. It, it will be safe from there, but... Uh, definitely uh, short on the distance. Could do a really good position. All all he really has to do is put a forehand up there, as he does. Great shot for Canute. Looks like a similar position here for Stale. We'll see if he can execute the same. Even better. Good shot by Stale. I, I know we talked about the the you know how sunny and how warm it must be and and uh, very mild out there. And right now you're not seeing any leaves blowing on the trees whatsoever. There's almost no sway in the trees at all. So it looks like very calm conditions. Yeah, it's not something you're used to seeing. You're thinking of Ragnarok, you know, the final Viking battle. And the, you know, that's not looking like that right now. Very mild, sunny, smiles on people's faces. Peter just hits off the top with a big improvement over yesterday, but Canute will be getting a birdie, increasing his lead, getting the double digits. Yeah, and that is the one of the few opportunities we saw. That was probably the closest putt that
that Peter hasn't converted on as we take a look at our PCS banner. And of course, thanks to everyone on the crew in uh, Iran and all of PCS for uh, making this event what it is, along with our hosts in Seifert and all of our camera crews and everybody else here on the property as we take a look at one of the easier holes on the course, hole 13. Yeah, probably one of the most uh, wide open and simple holes uh, that they have on the property. Only 86 meters. Knut will be lining up a straight backhand with a little bit of overstable finish. And does it get much better than that? Now, it looked like that was possibly a mid. I'm, I'm not sure what it was, but um, putting just the right amount of speed on it for sure. Looks like a mid by Peter. Peter's going to be looking to follow the same line as Knut. And it looks like he does exactly that. <laughs> Maybe even a little bit closer. What a great shot there. So Peter answers the call. I, somewhat surprised to see someone like Stale not just go with an overhand here. I mean, he, I think it's within his range and he's really comfortable with the shot. Absolutely. I, I want to say we, we've seen him do it in previous rounds, but I can't remember at the moment, but I mean, Stale still has the putt. So I think Stale knows his game best at this <laughs> point. Just a little, he was a little bit deep as uh, as is Andreas, but Stale uh, flirted with that OB line just for a moment. Stale is going to be the farthest out, just just low on the release. Like you you said, uh, we love the line that Canute put on it, but even closer, right next to the pin, is going to be Peter, and this is Andreas to get the third, what would be the third birdie in the group out of four. And Peter just dropping in his, his great tee shot. Yeah, it's always great. You, you, when you don't have to drop your snack, you don't have to take your bag off, that means you have definitely put it close enough. As we are going to move over and take a look here at hole number 14, which they've also made much more difficult here in the 2020 version. Yeah, we got a par four, 167 meters. Uh, this year, 2020, it looks to be playing as a completely different hole. Previous years, it was uh, basically a, a power sidearm or uh, a shot that went out straight and uh, was breaking to the to the right. But now you're throwing more of a straight backhand shot, maybe with a little bit of a overstable finish, just looking for position. And that is absolutely pure by Canute. He'll have a a pretty good uh, look from there, I imagine. And really, Canute is just showing uh, Peter the line he needs to hit. They have a you know very similar you know uh, styles in their game, both backhand uh, primarily. Let's see if that flips up at all it really just needed to miss that tree and it looked like it was going to be in great position uh and we'll see he might be quite obstructed from down there um, luckily his... there wasn't an out of bounds graphic i know it got a bad kick to the left but he did stay in bounds which is it's it's huge for peter he does he doesn't have uh you know much room to mess up for what for what he's doing Stale trying to uh, get on track here. He's trying to at least hold on to that second place position he started in. Peter has caught him and passed him as of right now. Yeah. 
And that, that looked like a pretty good shot from the standstill position, you know, and that's something that you have to think about anytime you're on this course. As beautiful as it, as it is, you, when you get pinched, there's some times where a standstill is your only option. Peter looked like he found the gap that he was trying to execute, but catching some wood about 75% of the way through his shot. And a little bit more of that trickery there with the overhand. Canute in the best position, forcing him to exercise his forehand. Wow, and even after the tree, it does still carry forward. Now here's Peter. He's really just trying to get up and down, and he's trying to walk away with his par. Doesn't quite get up on the shelf. We'll have a tester putt. Andreas hitting an early tree. Going to have a difficult look for his par. Now, I really feel like this could put some additional pressure on Peter if Canute can capitalize. Oh, not quite, but he makes that. That makes the, you know, Peter's uphill putt maybe a little bit more pressure packed. Oh, it looks like we got a couple of people <laughs> putting at the same time, maybe. <laughs> Stolly <laughs> rattling the chains. <laughs> rolling his tongue. So, something that I imagine is probably pretty normal for people in Europe, but you don't you don't get that much here in the US. <laughs> uh, good uphill putt there by Andreas to walk away with his par. So uh, almost the exact same position that Peter is in. So more and than a, a few inches from each other. Peter's putt seems to be closer than I thought it was, but st still a definite tester. And he keeps his scorecard clean. Incredible round that he's got going. The question is, will there be any any more opportunities for him to catch Canute? The holes are winding down, just a few left to play. There are 20 on the course this year. So that uh, gives him a little bit more room, but we're gonna move over to the uphill shot on hole number 15. 15 it's 85 meters uphill ideal shot is a backhand turnover with a uh, a fast mid-range or a fairway driver you can't get a forehand to work um but you know canute hopefully will show us exactly what to do looks like he slipped a little off the tee but the shot's still working in the right direction from where he's at, he's going to be a little outside the circle. Yeah, and those rocks are really a great reference point. Uh, obviously, if you get to them or beyond, uh, you know you're looking at a relatively close birdie putt. But at 85 meters, this this certainly plays uh, a lot longer, doesn't it? Yeah, it's definitely a it's definitely a, a bit of a pump to get up there. Peter is on that right side, just about pin high, it looks like. Andreas not quite turning it over as much and then uh, hitting one of the trees. I, I, I feel like, you know, you mentioned it, what kind of perfect shot you need to get up there. Just the gentlest of turn so that it doesn't cut roll out is so crucial here. Yeah, it's not, it's not too much because, you know, coming into the green, you don't want to have it cut roll. Um, but Stale... It hits the stump underneath the basket. So that's uh, that's exactly what we want to do. <laughs> yeah, not exactly something 
uh, you're probably thinking off the tee is, man, I really love to hit the stump and just have it sit there, but uh, <laughs> it's going to work for Stale here. And Canute not drawing any metal. Peter's going to be a bit closer than Canute. Wow. Yeah. Great birdie there by Peter. Good par save from Andreas. <laughs> you hear a little additional applause going on in the background. And the park job by Stale. And just keeping things tight here 11 under to 8 under to 9 under uh, a race to the podium spots and we're going to move on take a look at a hole that also got altered just slightly from 2019 hole number 16 at 400 feet eagle yeah we got uh, a downhill 400 foot shot 122 meters par 3 it's really about throwing a straight penetrating shot that has a little bit of finish at the end. We will see Peter first up. And now just to thwart any confusion, uh, if you're out here playing in a recreational round or you're out here playing any other time, uh, obviously some of the tees and the pins may not be numbered or in the same order that we're seeing them here for the tournament. So uh, that's why on so many of these holes, you might see a different number on top of the basket like we did there in the preview and a lot of the holes out here. So I just want to make that clarification for everyone uh, that when you're out here recreationally, it's a, a little bit different configuration, not quite as tough. Stole puts power behind it and I think it'll be just a little bit short, but with the putt. At least you can now go to that there because you don't like that. I'm trust Canute was uh, telling us something really informational there. I don't quite remember the shape of this shot. If I had, if you had to throw any Anheuser out of the hand to navigate around some of the early trees it seems like most of these guys are throwing it a uh, little bit of anheuser on out of the hand and hoping for it to to break back to the left yeah I, I think really it comes down to just how much power do you have you're trying to make sure you clear the ob on that left side uh if you're going all the way at the pin and all four of these players with more than enough power if you're a little less powerful i think you're trying to turn it over harder just to stay away from that OB as uh, Peter was short and on the right side. This could be a big moment for Canute. Oh, it puts it down. One of those mossy rocks might, might have saved him. We'll see on his next shot, though. Solid putt by Andreas. And almost to pin high, we have Stale. Maybe at six or seven meters. Yeah, I, I need to give Stale more credit from off the tee. From the camera angle, it seemed like he was a, a little bit shorter than he was. Let's see if he can convert. He does. So a couple of great birdies here now. Knut's got a little bit work. Well, it looks like maybe uh, Peter's actually out. Another um, good putt by Peter. Yeah, it looks like they might have had a conversation. I'm not sure if there was a little uh, mind or uh, chess match there where they're thinking about who is out. And I mean, because it clearly didn't look like uh, Peter was out by much, and Canute was ready to go, so maybe they had a conversation as to who had to go first, but they both make their putts, and uh, we play to the 
famous tractor green, which you don't get to say too often, do you? Not very. <laughs> Off to 17, par four, 186 meters, out of bounds on the left and right side. Really just a placement shot. Uh, fairway driver, distance driver. Make sure you don't fade too far left or pull it too far right. Or, you know, do neither and uh, go go with the overhand. <laughs> oh, no. It flirts with the OB line. I don't see Comes the Comes up just short. Yeah, wow, incredible. You know, closer to the OB line, it means closer to the basket. So that's <laughs> that's good for good for Stole. Andreas puts a good drive down there, it seems like. We'll see just how much he can attack. And this is a mid-range off the tee here by Peter. He's playing for position, not trying to get too greedy. Uh, and speaking of too greedy, this comes in as the second most difficult hole on the course. So it averages almost a full 1.4 strokes above par. And so obviously walking away with a par here uh, doesn't seem like it's going to hurt you too much, uh, even though someone like Stale or, or, or Peter here has some work to do. It seems like Canute hit early. And this, this looks to be a, a very interesting way to go. Gets the yellow flag, which might confuse some people, but those actually have smiley faces on them. So they're good. Yeah, that was a that was an angle that I would not really want to be throwing on my second shot. Okay. <laughs> It's out of bounds. Wow. It seems like there's a little confusion there uh, by the spectators and gallery and such, but marked as OB. This could be a big moment as Peter's trying. He, If he can get on the green and give himself a look at birdie, he could pick up a stroke here. Throwing a high hider that's pushing forward. Oh, yeah. That's awesome from from Peter. And as you mentioned, Stale, with pushing all the way to this OB line, he's going to actually be closest to the basket and a really good angle at it. This should be just pretty much a, uh, a gentle hyzer. Yeah, you can hang it out, you know, at a comfortable, comfortable distance and swing it back left. And, you know, great shot from, from Stale. He, Peter and Stale right now are, are competitive. And, you know, Canute doesn't really have any uh, insurance to, to mess up at this point. No, and you see him with a lunging putt toward the tractor. So at best, he's walking away with a par. Also a pretty good shot there by Andreas. And Stale's going to walk off a distraction there for a moment. Might have been a boat on, on the fjord. <laughs> oh, and just short. So now Peter has a chance to not only move into second, but just come within one stroke of Canute. And to get 10 under on the round. Incredible. Or nine under on the round. I believe Peter was uh, one under coming in today. Oh, and left side chain there from Canute's perspective, but that's in for the par. Good scramble from Canute. The, Canute never really had a, a comfortable shot on the entire hole, but he, he managed to scrape out a par. Wow, and things remain tight. I know this is the one tractor green that we're used to in Norway. Uh, 2010 world champ Eric McCabe tells me there's another tractor green. It's in Kansas. And I said, well, I don't know if they compare when you're looking at the <laughs> two. But <laughs> we move over to hole 18, just three holes left to play. 
and 357 feet. Trying to keep it straight here, Eagle? Yeah, straight with a little bit of fade to the left. Um, but, you know, pretty much there's no wind, so I imagine these guys are going with their their trusty, uh, you know, line-hitting type disc. Uh, so Peter just throwing something straight, getting a little bit high. I don't think that really pushed through. He's no. going to have about a 50 to 60 foot putt from uh, where he's at. He's right at the mouth of the gap, so he's going to be unobstructed, but definitely uh, short. This is probably a fairway driver of sorts. There you go. Stale starting it on the left side, but bringing it back to the right getting a good tree kick towards the basket. He'll be inside the circle putting for a birdie. And none of these guys took the route, but if you have the power, there is a big crashing hyzer into this green. Uh, is, is that what you took in 2019? I believe I took it one of the rounds. <laughs> Yeah, that is a that is a nothing but a raw power shot to try and go up and over and on the outside of all of that as we watch Andreas come up a little short and on the left side. Canute trying to make something work, but uh, he's going to have a tap in. And he's kind of hoping right now that Peter doesn't have any fireworks of his own. Peter with the yellow putter of sorts it seems like this is his long range putter yeah we saw him approach with that a few holes ago and then also like you said maybe a little bit more glide and that's next to the pin for andreas and slowly with the best birdie opportunity may or may not be inside the circle Looked like he was, but maybe a little too uh, anxious trying to offset that uphill putt. Pulls it high, hits off the top of the band. And that's a what would have been a really great opportunity, of course, for him to pull within one of the lead and not things up with Peter. But it looks like he's going to be walking away. I think we're going to see a uh, three or a correction, four pars here. As this averaged 3.4 on the weekend, which is a little bit surprising. We didn't see more birdies, but 3.4 overall on the weekend. Yeah, it's a distance where, you know, it's just hard enough to, to get to with that straight finish at the end. On to hole number 19, 220 meters, out of bounds on the left side and eventually right side as you get uh, further up the fairway as well as the road being out of bounds. This hole is all about biting as much off as you can chew. Any more you risk uh, the, uh, the potential of you know, going, going out of bounds left or right. So take your most trusted distance driver and just think about getting it in bounds. What I love is holes 17 and 19 are two out of the three hardest holes on the course. So there's no letting up and here we are on 19. It, exactly what you want to do. Yep, Peter's in great position to to approach for a second shot. And you know, if if you find yourself out of bounds, that's not the most difficult hole, but it's really it's really easy to just add up the out of bounds strokes if you're not careful. Okay, this is uh, this is big for Knut just to throw in bounds. He has two holes left. He has a one-stroke lead. If he can just get one birdie, there's a good chance that will that'll bring home the PCS Open for him. Stand-up shot by Andreas. We'll see if it could does. Clears the OB road. 
And they have this beautiful walk as they start ascending up this slight hill. And that's on the dance floor for Stale. And today, this shot's a lot more simple than previous rounds. <laughs> you know, usually there's wind coming off the, the fjord and the Arctic Ocean or rain. So this is, uh, this is pretty mild, but there is pressure, that's for sure. And rising to the occasion, Canute putting himself also up on the dance floor. He's got a really close look at Birdie from there. A crucial shot for Peter has to get it close if he wants any sort of chance. That looks a bit long, but still good. Still good for Peter. Giving it plenty of juice and uh, <laughs> Brage taking it all in. That's where he lives up there uh, in that house. Uh, when we talk about a backyard course or your home course, that is quite literal when you're out here with Brage and Seifert. Uh, Yaron lives just down the road. Uh, just an incredible facility and uh, experience when you're here. And Eagle, you and I had the chance of staying right there on site last year. Just uh, quite amazing. <laughs> wow. And there's Andreas with the highlight putt. No chains required. And we'll see if that kind of gets things started on a star frame because if, if Peter wants any chance to take this down, he's going to have to make this. It's a big pressure putt. A little bit of wind. And the wind rises it. Really, we haven't had hardly any wind today, and it seems to have just blown right when Peter grabbed his disc. And then Stale, that would have been huge for him to tie up Peter. I, I mentioned it in round two. This is, I believe, the highest point on the course, and also probably the spot with the least amount of trees. So any win that is there, uh, you're, they're feeling all of it. Wow. <laughs> Just squeaking it in. Canute's going to be very close for his, his birdie. And he's got to be, got to be happy with that going into the final hole of the event. Yeah, knowing that uh, there's OB uh, abundant here as we're looking at the beautiful view on hole number 20, a two-stroke lead. He's just got to find a way to get up and down. P probably a par should do it for him, uh, minus any miracles by someone else. But 354 feet downhill to the beautiful protected green. Yeah, the, I imagine that Canute will be running the green here because... It's it's kind of an awkward hole to lay up on, but I could be wrong. I think he might just be sticking to his game plan. Just trying to throw a smooth hyzer. And coming up short, inbounds. Inbounds, but not by much. You know, if it weren't for the, you know, maybe the freshly cut hay or, or grass there, that very easily could have uh, jumped up and popped OB. Andreas uh, kind of airs it out, and he's going to find the OB. A shot like that from Andreas makes me think that there is a lot more wind uh, than we might think. So I got to give credit to Canute because he might have uh, fought the wind very well on, on that shot. Wow. wow. Yeah, sticking it on the green, just carrying over the basket is the shot by Peter. Might doesn't look like it's going to be enough here if Canute can get up and down. Stolly with <laughs> playing it wide and the tombstone. Let's 
So yeah. there, there you have it, guys. Canute's gonna be your champ. But yeah, there's still a little bit of there's still a, a fight for uh, you know second place. Peter needs to make this putt to grab hold of solo second. If not, Stolle has a chance to tie him. A perfectly clean scorecard for Peter. Oh, and it, it's going to remain clean, but that one's going to hurt a little bit. And then rising to the occasion, Stale steps up on the final hole to make the birdie putt, and that means we will have a tie for second place. A great effort there by Peter. But him and Stale, just not enough to hunt down the young superstar in Canute. And, uh, well, Eagle, as Yaron uh, comes in. <laughs> and uh, the ultimate Norwegian hype man <laughs> in Yaron. I've got to ask you, Eagle, you know, we're not there. You weren't there to defend the title, but... The torch is officially being passed over to Canute. How does that feel? It's cool to see. I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe Canute's a two-time PCS champ from a, a long time ago. So, uh, you know, seeing him uh, bring it home again, uh, I'd say Canute is uh, one of the best, if not the best player from Norway. He was actually, uh, he was in the U.S. this year, and he was going to tour, but uh, you know, COVID nineteen happened, and that that threw everyone's world for a loop. But it didn't affect him too much as he's uh, standing on top of the podium at the PCS Open. And in true PCS Open uh, fashion, as Knut's dad Yostein uh, walks up, uh, a little celebration. And the PCS, we all know, a very serious. Very, very professionally run, great event, but they also party like almost no other event. And uh, I, uh, looking forward to the rest of the world getting some of that experience in 2021. Yes, if you come from out of the country or even within the country of Norway, these guys will make sure you have an unbelievable time, a time that you will not forget. And you know, you've heard me and Terry say it, and we'll say it again. The PCS Open is one of the best disc golf events you can visit. Uh, yeah, and and to to just reiterate that point, uh, not too many places, Yay! Eagle, do I expect to see you in a uh, Viking helmet. But uh, <laughs> PCS Open is one of those places. So we're gonna close things out. Make sure you like, share, and comment. Make sure you leave a comment so we can give something away. Peter, with that incredible run of nine under, but not enough as Stale and Canute hold on to their positions. And uh, we're going to see Peter in a second place tie and your champion, of course, Canute. Eagle, thanks for joining and uh, can't say it enough. Looking forward to seeing you there in 2021. Can't wait to be there. Thanks for having me, Terry, and uh, PCS Open. Love you guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs>